I'm the Chief Architect of New York City Transit. New York City Transit is the client for the Second Avenue subway. That is to say, when the project is complete, we inherit the project. Um, and as Chief Architect for New York City Transit, um, everything, anything that, uh, that is aesthetic in terms of the design of the stations, of the entrances, of the ancillary buildings, um, everything architectural would come through my office. Um, I also serve as a liaison, as a coordinator between the operating units, um, um, stations typically, some uh, MOW to a certain extent, um, that's our maintenance of way group. Um, I serve to liaise when um, the issues that arise uh, deal with them because they're the ones who will be maintaining this asset in the future. for the Second Avenue subway. Um, and the design process is such that we typically do preliminary design and then a final design. And at certain milestone points, the design is presented to the community. Um, we're working on stations, we're working on entrances, we're working on ancillary buildings. Each of these um, items of design are presented to the community. They have an opportunity to give their feedback and to the extent possible, we incorporate that feedback. In terms of who gave the presentations to the community. There were occasions when the lead architect from AECOM gave those presentations to the community, and in other instances, uh, myself as chief architect, I gave those presentations to the community soliciting their input. A little about the architectural aesthetics, um, that the vision, if you will, that was um, was considered or tried to achieve, and you'll, you'll give us feedback, let us know if we were successful um, in, in the design, was um, we know, uh, it's been very pu highly publicized, that, that the stations we used um, tunnel boring machines, TBM, to uh, create this new uh, Second Avenue subway line. And I know that the lay people out there, when they think of a, a TBM, you almost think of a, a corkscrew um, kind of boring through um, you know, the, the rock uh, on which Manhattan, Manhattan sits. And so if you, if you think of a corkscrew creating this tunnel and the imagery that would be left behind, that was sort of, um, that begins to inform what um, underlies uh, the vision of the station designs. So as we descend um, on the escalator, imagine yourself coming down the escalator and the imagery of the lighting that was created were these ribs. So again, if we go back to the corkscrew imagery, and, and you know on a corkscrew you have those ribs, that's what's created. So similarly as, similarly, as you're going down the escalator, that's how you're gonna feel, that you're following this corkscrew down into the main cavern. As we um, get down, you're at the lower mezzanine now, and we're entering into the station, um, and we go through a series of smaller caverns, and then finally you emerge into the big open mezzanine, which is a big open cavern. And unlike the existing system, which is what we call cut and cover, so it was open, the street was open, we built the subway, and then we put in a series of columns and beams, and we closed it back up again. Here, by using the TBN, and um, excavating, uh, creating a tunnel, you now have a big open cavern. And that cavern is celebrated in the architecture. There, there you, you will see a finished ceiling that picks up the curvature of the cavern. Of course, there's lots of infrastructure that's above that final curvature that you're seeing, but it does um, replicate, if you will, the cavern which was created by the tunnel boring machines. So we're on the mezzanine, and as I say, we have the open cavern, and there are, you will see um, there are a series of stairs uh, that go down to the, uh, the uh, platform level. And so there are um, parallel, we have, it's, it's, it's a double level. You have the platform level and then above the mezzanine level. All um, from end to end of the station um, is both the mezzanine and the platform. And there are a series of openings that when you're on the platform, you can see up to the mezzanine and vice versa. And so the big open cavern is up on the mezzanine level. 
Um, and then down on the platform level, we have similar, um, a similar aesthetic in terms of um, what we call a utility carrier. Uh, again, different from, from the existing system where, where all of our infrastructure is um, very open to the visual eye. Um, our lighting, all of the conduits, all of the speaker conduits. Again, remember the original subway was built in 1908. Much of the infrastructure didn't exist. And so through these past hundred years, we've been adding more and more infrastructure. In the new system, on a new set line like the Second Avenue line, you have an opportunity to bring in all the infrastructure at one point. And so we've designed what we call utility carriers, which um, to a certain extent mask all of that infrastructure. And um, so we have one in the center underneath the cavern at the uh, mezzanine level, and then two uh, paralleling um, each of the uh, tracks down on the platform level. I started with New York City Transit in 2007. Before my arrival here, however, um, new station design guidelines were developed, and in large part that was done by AECOM um, for New York City Transit such that they would have a set of standards uh, to which they could proceed in designing uh, the new stations. This was then used for uh, the Seven Line Extension, um, as well as the South Ferry Station, which were all uh, considered expansion projects. They were all new stations. Uh, in terms of those guidelines, um, there's a lot that's included um, from a utilitarian point of view, from a maintenance point of view, um, as well as the user's uh, point of view. Our new stations have to meet both our internal new station guidelines as well as codes and regulations um, for this century, which includes ADAG, so that's giving us um, responding to the American for Disabilities Act. There are redundant elevators, so we have at least two elevators at every station. I know that um, New York City Transit's history with elevators um, is a question that the community might be concerned with. Um, specifically at 72nd Street, we've got um, an entrance that has five elevators taking us to what is extremely low um, a, a subterranean uh, entrance, which is particularly uh, low elevation. Um, there's also, of course, uh, escalators and stairs for those who um, would prefer um, as well. And there, too, I think in most cases we have uh, redundant escalators. So uh, from a maintenance point of view. We, we can be working on one escalator when the other is always in service. As we descend into the system, we're on the escalator heading down. We uh, refer to these ribs that you're going to pass through. Those ribs are created um, by a frosted glass. They're frosted glass ribs. In between the frosted glass ribs are the light fixtures themselves. So the light is diffused through the frosted glass. Um, and, and so that, those, that not only does it light the escalator to meet code, but it also creates the imagery that we spoke of, as I say, sort of that corkscrew going down. Uh, when we arrive at the uh, mezzanine, the um, finished ceiling is um, a stainless steel open mesh. Um, which again allows for um, flexibility of infrastructure, um, both to put in new infrastructure as the system and as technology grows and changes, but also from an inspection point of view, it allows for ease of inspection from our maintenance of way folks. So on that level where we have the um, open mesh stainless steel, we have traditional uh, lighting. And then as we descend even further to the lower mezzanine, um, we have in the uh, utility carrier on the main, uh, if you will, the main trunk or the backbone of, of the um, mezzanine, we have um, up lighting. And then again, at the, you have a cavern, and at the edges of the cavern, there's up lighting of the cavern itself. So that's um, all um, um, sort of diffuse light. By up lighting, um, um, it creates, um, instead of having light in your eyes, you're, you're getting a diffuse light by bouncing it from above down below. And then down on the platform level, 
again incorporated into the utility carrier, um, is more similar to our traditional lighting, um, but very integral uh, with, with the uh, architectural aesthetic. Code requires that escalator to be covered. So at the entries to the Second Avenue subway, we have canopies, which is unlike the existing system. Uh, we're, we're all familiar with the um, green cast iron. Uh, internally, we refer to those as the KA rails. Um, on the new system, we'll have glass canopies that are perched on um, stainless steel structure. Around, or what's holding up that stainless steel structure in most cases are granite walls. Uh, the reason that the granite walls were designed, um, the entries are in large majority uh, on the street curb line. And so from a safety point of view, we, um, it was designed to have those walls to be able to withstand um, a crash, uh, which keeps our passengers, you all in the community, safe. So that's the granite walls. On the granite walls are glass canopies. Again, that's the ascent descent, so they're sloped. Um, we chose glass and stainless to make them as transparent as possible, which allows whatever architecture um, is presently found in that neighborhood, in that community, to read clearly through uh, this glass and stainless canopy. How is it the same and how is it different from our existing system? Um, I guess similarities in terms of the signage, um, we will all recognize the uh, white lettering on black background with our typical circular, um, you know, colorful uh, line identity. Uh, that will be clearly seen throughout all of our new stations as it is in our existing stations. However, in the original stations, if you go back to the, uh, what's known as Contract 1, our 1908 stations, um, we're all familiar with the mosaic bands that uh, New York City Transit is known for. Um, and those who are even more familiar with the system know that by the time the IND was built in um, say the 1930s, the, the mosaic um, loses its um, detail and is really just bands of color. So now we have a new iteration. This is the new Second Avenue line. And here we don't have the bands at all. So I know that may be to um, some people's dismay that you'll be looking for the New York City Transit um, um, mosaic bands. They won't be in the new, in the new subway. Um, however, as I say, our traditional signage will be there. Um, other than that, in terms of um, the traditional aesthetic, um, from the very beginning, New York City Transit was designed with white tiles. And the reason that the chief architect at the time um, chose white tiles were for sanitary reasons. Um, and that, that continues today. Uh, they're different tiles. They're not uh, the small ceramic tiles or, or the small glass tiles. We're using um, larger por porcelain uh, tiles. But you still have that same uh, white uh, aesthetic. It's a little off-white in the newer stations.